What is going on everybody? Welcome to another episode of Drive Miami today. Once again, working on the E36. Check it out. So, basically what's going on right now with this, uh, was my daily driver. Um, I hit, uh, I hit a manhole cover. I hit my oil pan, destroyed my oil pan. It looks really bad. Um, but the car itself is still working. I'll explain that a little later. Uh, but I hit a manhole cover. Let me show you the damage. And then I'm going to explain to you what happened. And then we're going to fix it. So, you guys know what to do. Alright, so first things first. I already took out the front bumper. Main reason why I took out the front bumper. Because obviously I needed to tow the car to my house. Uh, but basically what's going on as of right now um, I need to go ahead and inspect the oil pan which I already know is completely duffed um, but I want to show you guys how bad it is and then we're gonna go ahead and show you how to replace it because I was looking up a bunch of videos online I haven't seen anybody posted videos of how to replace the oil pan just just that so uh, we're gonna go ahead and do that I'll show you how to do it in detail but first things first I need to inspect it see what I need to order and then order the parts so um, let's tackle that all right, as you can already tell, I am under the car. The car is lifted on jack stands. Uh, I have jack stands on either side. Pulling the car up from the front real high so I can get my body under here so I can check it out. Uh, remember, I'm just inspecting what's going on, see what's going on here. And basically, I got a duffed, and I do mean duffed, oil pan. Look at that guy. So basically, I've been checking it out. Check it out before. I've been pulling out little pieces of metal here and there. Uh, it broke into about four or five pieces, but I have just about all the metal, so I know no metal is inside. But I still need to check inside just in case there's a little shard or piece that I don't know of. Uh, so now that you guys know exactly how duffed my uh, oil pan is, which is uh, chopped and screwed, um, let me tell you what happened. All right, I got you on top of the intake and the intake manifold, so you guys are sitting there, get the car guide view. All right, so basically, what's going on right now, as of this moment, um, what happened was uh basically uh those of you that are from miami there's a road called old color road which is a nice little winding road and it's nice and drivable mind you miami's mostly flat so anywhere you could actually drive like a nice little road with you know trees and nice view and all that stuff nice houses you drive through it so in a nutshell what had happened uh, i was driving enjoying my, my day with my brother driving and uh i didn't see a manhole cover that was there um to the eye it, I went back and I checked it after I hit it obviously you guys are gonna see some footage I'm probably gonna put a little something here and there of what happened as I'm talking you know so you guys can so, see what happened physically I recorded it um, so basically I hit the manhole cover because it had a dip in this one side of the manhole cover and the other side of the manhole cover was straight the manhole cover itself was not you know it wasn't cocked or anything it was perfectly straight it just when I, my car hit that dip my bumper passed over no problem and I got a low car so my bumper passed over no problem just when I hit that dip the car dipped and it just boom and just completely completely screwed the the oil pan now as soon as that happened i already knew because i heard the metal dee, 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 dropping on the floor and stuff so i'm freaking out i'm like oh man i just dumped my oil pan I'm, I'm super screwed hopefully it doesn't hurt the engine so the first thing i did threw the car in neutral pulled over put the e-brake on took a look at the 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 rpms saw that the rpms was still was still idling i looked at the car noticed it was humming just fine uh, I looked around, turned the car off, because I saw white smoke, because obviously I hit the oil pan, so I knew I needed to turn off the car. This was all in just a few seconds. I turn off the car, uh, I hop out, I look, I make sure that there's, there's, you know, the car's not going to catch fire or any of that stuff, so I push the car off to the side uh, with my brother. I threw the car in neutral, put the e-brake down, push the thing to the side with my brother. Uh, once we push the thing to the side with my brother, we stop there, obviously the smoke's gone away. And I lift one side up and that's when I noticed my oil pan was completely, completely shot. Like completely shot. So, uh, I mean, it sucks for me. It's cool for you guys because you guys get to learn. But damn, man, now I gotta replace, one, I hurt my baby. And two, I gotta replace this oil pan now. So, uh, I'm gonna give you a brief of how to do it and I'm gonna tell you where I got my parts and stuff from. So let's do that now. All right, so. Basically, where I sourced my parts so far from, I found another oil pan on eBay. It was a cheap one, it's about $99. Um, I'm gonna see how much it, you know, if it's any difference. I think with shipping and everything, it comes up to like $130 or something like that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and buy that. 
Um, once I go ahead and buy that, my next thing I'm going to do is probably, uh, obviously I need to take out the bolts of the subframe. So basically there's four bolts on the subframe to my knowledge so far. Four bolts on the subframe. Take out the four bolts. Once you take out the four bolts, um, you actually have to hold the car up with the jack stand. I mean the engine, and I mean the subframe. Yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. Subframe with the jack stand. You hold the uh, subframe with the jack stand. You unbolt the uh, bolts of the engine mounts. Once you have the engine mount bolts off, you're gonna go ahead and lower uh, the subframe while holding. If you have what you need a hoist for this, you need to hold the engine up with the hoist. While holding the engine up with the hoist, you're gonna lower the subframe. And once you lower the subframe, it'll give you access to all the bolts. Then you're gonna go ahead and unbolt all the bolts, take it down as you're supposed to, which I'm gonna find out later. So what I've done so far is I went ahead and ordered the part. Uh, so it's gonna take me about a week or two to get in. So now I gotta wait a week or two, and it's really inconvenient for me because. Uh, I mean, I just got a, a kick-ass new job, so, uh, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do what we gotta do, and, uh, next time you guys will see me, apparently, would be, I wanna say, in just a few seconds, it'll be about a week or two, so we'll see what's up. See you then. So, parts finally came in. It's about, like, kid you not, like, four weeks later. Uh, pain in the ass not having a car, but it is what it is. Uh, it's finally get cracking on E36. So, basically, uh, what I've done so far, got the engine hoist out. Uh, normally you can use our engine support bracket that literally just put across the struts, uh, pulls the engine up, make your life easier. But since I only have this, this is what I'm using, it is what it is, and so forth. Now, uh, we gotta get cracking on the pan. I already went ahead and took out the wheels, supported the engine. Uh, all that's necessarily left, I want to say, is uh, jumping in the car and start disassembling everything. Uh, I'm gonna kind of short on time. Uh, I'm in a time crunch, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start tackling it, and as, as, as I do it, I'm going to start uh, filling you guys in. Alright, so check it out. Alright, so a little update as to uh, what's going on, what I've done so far is I went ahead and taken the belts out. Uh, I disconnected the rack already, well not the rack, I disconnected the steering shaft to the rack. Um, what else did I do? Uh, well, that's the two main things I've done so far. Um, next thing to do as of right now is to go ahead and disconnect the rack itself which I'm gonna show you right now all right so went ahead and took out the 13 millimeter bolt that we have here that's this is the bolt that was holding holding the steering uh, shaft to the steering rack went ahead and took this out it has two little washer already pre uh, installed or whatever the case may be whatever um, next thing to do now is like I said get to the rack which I'm gonna show you now Ugh. which as you can see already if you can see right there, I went ahead and took out the bolt holding the steering rack and the steering shaft together. Uh, I went ahead and marked it. Let's see if you guys can see that mark. Um, well, if you see two little black dots, they have two lines across it. That's the best I can mark it. I marked it to uh, basically when we put it back, we align it the best we can. Uh, next up is now to the steering rack, which is this is the rack right here. This big dirty part right over here. This part, part right here is the rack. You know, it's tie rods, rack. So this rack needs to come out. Got to undo these bolts right here, which there are two, one on this side, one on the other side. We're going to take those bolts out and um, maybe take out the reservoir, which I can't see, but it's somewhere over here. That's re reservoir right there where I'm shining the light. So um, we might have to take out the reservoir, disconnect the rack, see if we can make the sucker hang. All right, so it's kind of late. Um, it's getting a little dark, but like I said, I'm time crunched, so I have to do this. Uh, basically, what's going on right now is uh, I went ahead and loosened the bolts of the motor mounts. I disconnected the uh, control arm bushings, so those are disconnected as well. So uh, let me physically show you. All right, just so you guys can see, right here is the control arm bushing. I went ahead and disconnected this. That basically. This is right here connected to the control arm. Control arm connects to the body. That's the control arm bushing. Went ahead and disconnected the control arm bushing. Then after I did that, if you see here, there is a bolt. That is the bolt for the motor mount. Went ahead and undid that. So if you see there, it's loose already, about to be taken out. So I went ahead and did that as well. Then on top of that, let me go ahead and get to the top of the motor. All right, so we're, we're in the top of the motor. Uh, I went ahead and you see there, that's the reservoir for the power steering. Uh, the power steering reservoir, uh, I went ahead and disconnected the 10mm bolt for the power steering reservoir. Then I forgot what size bolt, but if you see here where the light is hitting, that is your power steering pump. 
We need to go ahead and take that bolt out as well, which I already have everything loose, which is the bolts on either end of the top. Uh, basically, that bolt right there, and on the other side, holding a bracket. Once you take it out, everything can be dropped right out. And this is the reason why I'm doing that. Like I said, here's the power steering pump from the bottom of the uh, the bottom of the motor. Uh, so now, if you lean it this way, you see the lines. I go to the power steering pump to the reservoir, the reservoir to the rack. And you see, if I drop this rack, it's going to be literally uh, tugging right over here and here. And that is something I don't want to do. Uh, if you notice, there's oil all over it, mainly because obviously it destroyed the oil pan, so oil spl splattered everywhere. And also, I think it's leaking a little bit too, but uh, basically, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect that and this, which is the reservoir and the power steam pump, and dangle everything. But before I could dangle it, if you see here, no clearance, got to lift the motor. So that's up right now. All right, what's going on, everybody? I've already got to work. It's a new day. Obviously, I'm dirty as hell. I look like a bum right now. But basically, what's going on, just so you guys can see what's going on so far, we already have... The rack suspended and the subframe as well suspended. The subframe is there too. So we got both the subframe and the rack suspended. Uh, sway bar is out. Out of the way, we have the uh, power, steering reservoir, uh, power steering reservoir and power steering pump suspended with zip ties. Uh, all that's left is now is to get to the oil pan. As you guys can see, it's all exposed finally. Uh, and then I'm just going to take out the bolts. I'm missing some swivel, so uh, swivel extensions. Excuse me. And also, you need some E sockets which are the star sockets and that's what's going to be uh, taking out the oil pan that's connected to the back where the transmission is so that's all you guys need and then let's get to work all right so oil pan is out it was a bitch and a half to get out but i was able to get out finally that thing is super screwed so it's time to grab the new one and uh first first things first time to grab the new one make sure everything's scuffed and prepped and ready to go around the edges do the same thing on the engine itself <coughs> put the gasket put the gasket sealer on certain points of the of the oil pan and then tighten everything up in a certain sequence of course i'm going to go ahead and find all that stuff out and uh do that now all right so here we have the two oil pans we have the old uh crusty and dusty and the new clean and mean so we're going to go ahead and put this uh this oil pan in, throw away that one, throw it back in the box and chuck it away somewhere, give it to my uncle, the recycler, whatever the case may be. So we're going to go ahead and put this one in. This one I got, like I said, on eBay. It's real, real clean. Everything's already ready to go. I got my gasket right here. This is my gasket, and I got my gasket sealer, or at least the where you're supposed to put in between where... The two pieces of the motor joint in the front and the back. Uh, I forgot the names of the parts, but you got to put a little bit of sil uh, silicone or sealer there. And then put your oil pan and gasket together all in one shot. And then you'll be ready to go. So, all right. real quick, as you see, I'm going to head and put it where it's supposed to go. There's some back here as well. You guys can't see it, but back here, I'm going to put the silicone. And now it's time to put on the oil pan. So, a lot has been done so far, as you see. We got our uh, brand new oil pump, uh, oil pump, oil pan installed. Uh, now that the oil pan is installed, I went ahead and installed the power steering pump. Just got to go ahead and install the power steering reservoir. The rack, I mean not the rack, but the whole subframe is officially installed. So all that's left, technically speaking, is to reattach the rack. Like I said, finish up with the uh, power steering uh, reservoir, bolt up the sway bars, bolt up the control arm bushings, and I think we're almost ready to go. And of course, change the oil. Well, not change the oil, but put new oil in it. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right, so if you can see here, the rack bolts are in. But the whole rack is in. Already went ahead and connected the sway bars. So that's in two. Then, of course, uh, you guys can't see it, but I went ahead and attached the rack itself. Uh, let's see if I can get you guys to see that. Went ahead and attached the rack. I just gotta go ahead and bolt it up. It's finally attached. I went ahead and checked it with the. Uh, Markings I have, it's lined up the best I can, so everything's lined up. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the bolt through. 
And uh, we're almost done. After that, I just got to go ahead and finish up by putting all the belts and stuff back on. I, you know, change the oil and we should be ready to go. All right, so I am completely exhausted. Um, I got most of this work done. So uh, let me show you exactly where we're at right now. All right, so control arm bushings are in. Uh, we went ahead and put in, as you guys could probably or probably cannot see, that bolt right there, which is the motor mount bolt. So motor mounts are in. So all that's left now to do is uh, obviously put the belts on. After we put the belts on, uh, put some oil in it, change well, change the oil filter, put some oil in it, and then uh, finally give her a crank. I ain't gonna lie, I am extremely, extremely nervous. Ugh. I mean, normally, to be honest with you, I shouldn't be nervous, Ugh. but me being me, every time I do something, no matter what it is, small, big, anything in between, I pass, it's just what I do. So um, let me just finish buttoning everything up. And the moment of truth. Here we go. All right, well, it's the moment of truth. I'm just pretty excited. Let's get it at the same time. But we're gonna do this together. Oh man. And it's flipping. There's a lizard there. I am flipping the fuck out. Like it's nobody's business right now. Oh, this is idling rough. Check it out. And she runs. Eileen. Woo! I'm so damn happy right now. Obviously, it's burning, up, it's burning around some oil that I spilled and whatnot, and all the extra oil. But it is, it is back. Revenge of the E36.